In this video, we are going to talk about reasons why you have intrusive thoughts. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because as a fearful avoidant, you might be struggling with in intrusive thoughts, which are, if you didn't know, uh, thoughts that just come up unannounced out of nowhere that can be pretty gruesome. They can be your biggest fears. They can be you uh, seeing yourself doing something or thinking that you want to do something that you actually don't want. Um, and they they usually come with a lot of fear or numbness, complete numbness. And I remember taking my thoughts really seriously. And so also my intrusive thoughts. I didn't know they were intrusive thoughts. I didn't know there was a difference between different kind of kinds of thoughts. But <clears throat> I thought that all these horrible thoughts said something about me as a person. And first of all, thoughts are not the truth. 99% of our thoughts are just rehashes of things that we have heard from other people, from our parents, from media, from movies, from friends. Um, and that that is kind of like a radio chattering in the background. And intrusive thoughts are definitely also not the truth. So that might already help you to kind of take the edge off to not make them as powerful as you are afraid they are. Because um, they are just kind of a fear brain out of control. That's how I started to see it. And that's really what it is. It's, it's just a lot of fear. So why do you have these intrusive thoughts? They are linked to trauma. They are linked to CPTSD. Um, but why, why would you have them? Why would your fear brain create them? Because nothing you think or feel is weird. Everything is, is logical. It doesn't mean that it's true or it doesn't mean that it says anything about you. But it is logical. And that's a good thing because then you can heal it also. So why you have intrusive thoughts? First of all, you're human. Pretty much everyone has them. And this was such an eye-opener to me. I, I thought I was the only one who had horrible, horrible thoughts about me being, um, being attacked or being hurt in a horrible way or me hurting others in horrible ways. But it turns out that pretty much everyone has them. The difference between people struggling with their mental health and people who are not struggling with their mental health is the degree to which you take them seriously. So you could have a person who has an intrusive thought about, for instance, dropping their newborn baby and they think, oh, that's a weird thought. And they just go about their day. And then you have somebody who may be much more anxious or traumatized and think, oh, I'm thinking about dropping my baby. Am I going to drop my baby? Will I drop my baby? Is that going to happen? So you take them much more seriously. Uh, that is a big difference. But pretty much every person has them because pretty much every person has a fear brain and this is just something your fear brain does every now and then. And why does your fear brain do this? It's trying to keep you in fear and therefore safe. And this sounds so weird because why in heaven's name would your fear brain um, intrude your mind with these horrible thoughts? But... Your fear brain only wants to protect you. It is not at all uh, looking to make you happy. That is not its main objective. It's not an objective at all of your fear brain. It would much rather keep you safe. And it believes that you will be safe if you stay in fear. Because as long as you stay in fear, you will pay attention. You will be aware of the threats coming. You will be hyper vigilant. And so you might notice that intrusive thoughts can come at any point in time, but it might also happen in moments that you kind of let go or relax or are present in the moment. And your fear brain is, nope, we're not going to do that. Here's an intrusive thought that is very, 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 very scary. You need to get back in fear because you need to pay attention. You cannot let go of control because then everything will go wrong. And that is very much linked to trauma. Um, if you have this underlying belief that you have to be in control, you always have to pay attention, you always have to be vigilant, then that usually comes from trauma. 
So your fear brain is trying to keep you in fear and it has different kinds of mechanisms and tools for that. But intrusive thoughts are definitely one of the tools. And that's why it's always the things that you are the most afraid of or that you feel the most horrible about. Because your fear brain genuine, genuinely believes that if you are as fearful as possible and feel as shitty as possible about yourself, that's when you're safest. It's interesting, isn't it? Because then you pay attention. Then you are aware. Then you won't let anything slip or slide. Then you will see threats coming. Then you will be prepared for those threats. But that's just a tactic of your fear brain. And your fear brain never tells the truth. It is just trying to keep you safe. So how is your fear brain trying to keep you safe other than seeing the, um, seeing the threats coming and being aware by these intrusive thoughts? Why would you, why would you take them seriously? When you have the fearful avoidant attachment style, you grow up in a way that makes it very likely that you have a hard time trusting yourself because your feelings were denied, your emotions were denied, uh, you were corrected a lot. So anything that came natural, it fearful avoidant parents have the tendency to correct behavior instead of saying, okay, what is underlying this behavior? What does my child need? And so you, and also a fearful avoidant parent tends to lash out very uh, inconsistently so you always feel like you're doing something wrong they tend to be critical and judgmental so you always feel like you're doing something wrong all of this leads to you not really trusting yourself it makes so much sense it has nothing to do with you it has to do with all the messaging that you uh, received when you grew up so when you don't trust yourself you take these intrusive thoughts very seriously because you're so afraid of hurting others or hurting yourself and so you are trying to protect mostly others by having these intrusive thoughts but also taking them seriously let's go back to the intrusive thoughts of dropping your baby which pretty much every mother of a newborn child has um Somebody who is traumatized, somebody with a fearful avoidant attachment style will take that more seriously because one of the core beliefs of the fearful avoidant attachment style is I am, I always hurt others. So when you have this intrusive thought of I am going to drop my baby, you don't think, oh, that's a weird thought because I know myself and I know that I won't hurt other people. You have this belief installed in you that you always hurt others, that you always do things wrong, that you always slip up if you don't. Uh, if you're not aware and paying attention. So you think, oh, I'm going to drop my baby. I can't drop my baby. That would mean I'm a horrible mother and I'm a bad person. I can't do that. And because that correlates with the belief you already have about yourself, that's why it's, it feels more true. Whereas if somebody believes they're a good person and they are trustworthy and they trust themselves and what comes naturally from them um, is good, they are very less likely, much less likely to uh, see that intrusive thought as having to do anything with them. So that is one of the biggest differences that you can have intrusive thoughts and just not take them seriously at all. But for a fearful avoidant who is very anxious, that is really hard to not take seriously because you're so afraid of hurting others and you're always afraid that you're doing something wrong or missing something. And so that thought is like, oh, what if that's true? What if, what if I am going to drop my baby? That would be horrible. And you think that means something about you. So I just want you to know that intrusive, intrusive thoughts say, say nothing about you. The only objective is that your fear brain is trying to keep you in fear. So you will keep paying attention. Um, and as you heal the fearful avoidant attachment style, you will notice that, uh, this becomes easier and easier to not take seriously. And because of that, the intrusive thoughts just don't come as often anymore. Because you are, um, the tactic just doesn't work anymore. So your fear brain thinks, oh, okay, well, that doesn't work anymore. It might still try to keep you safe in other ways, but also healing the fearful avoidant attachment style will really calm your fear brain down because it has the feeling that you are much more in control 
and you don't need to be kept safe as much as possible. So your fear brain is not trying to work against you necessarily. It really is just panicked and, and trying to keep you safe. Um, so healing the fearful avoidant attachment style will help you have less intrusive thoughts, take them less seriously, but also calm down your fear brain so that it doesn't feel the need to protect you as much. I'm curious, do you, do you recognize this? Do you uh, struggle with intrusive thoughts? Did you believe that they were true? Did you take them for truth? Um, because that can be hard. So let's just share in the comments and, uh, and see if we can kind of support each other in this. I hope this was valuable. I hope you got some more insight into how this works, how intrusive thoughts work because that really helps in healing. As always, I am so happy you are here and I will see you in the next one. Healed and Happy is a tailor-made online program where me and my team personally guide you through healing the roots of a fearful avoidant attachment style. 